Hello, um, I'm Mara Russell, and I am going to talk about food aid, cash vouchers, local, regional, and international purchase, different safety net modalities. These are generally focused on emergencies, social protection, increasing uh, nutrition and providing a safety net for resilience. Um, so generally, um, safety nets address urgent needs um, for urgent and severe food insecurity and malnutrition in humanitarian contexts. They ensure that food insecure populations maintain access to food. They cover the cost of labor for construction, critical infrastructure, construction of critical infrastructure that contributes to natural resource management, reduces negative impacts of climate change, and facilitates access to water resources. Um, the safety nets improve access to nutritious foods, especially, especially nutrition safety nets um, of various kinds. Um, and they um, are focused on pregnant and lactating women and children under the age of two years. And it is also possible for safety nets to provide non-food inputs, such as agric for agricultural production or startup funds for non-agricultural livelihoods. The first example um, I am showing is that of in-kind food aid. Um, it's used in urgent situations where there's poor availability. That means that food is lacking in the markets, but also farmers are not producing food for various reasons. Um, and so it's necessary to bring in food from other countries to save lives. Um, food is used in situations where nutritious foods are not available in markets or too expensive for household purchase. And basically, um, there is a way of testing to see whether nutritious foods are sufficiently available in markets um, and whether they can be purchased by the people that you most want to address the nutrition of. So um, US in-kind food aid tends to be very nutritious. Therefore, it's appropriate to bring it in in those cases. It's also used to provide food um, for schools to increase enrollment and attendance and advance educational attainment. So um, the McGovern Dole Food for Education program uses mainly imported food aid for their activities imported from the US. So um, this picture shows women in Niger in, in Marathi receiving US in-kind food aid uh, from the USAID Hamzari program that is run by Care Niger. Um, and uh, it has provided, the food aid is provided to enhance their nutrition and that of their children under two and other family members who may be in need. Um, they also receive uh, social and behavioral chain messages, change messages on effective nutrition processes, practices. And these women would not normally be able to purchase highly nutritious foods, such as the CSB that they're now receiving in the market due to their poverty. Another way to provide nutrition is one that is used uh, in the Tichikulani, the Care Malawi Tichikulani program. Um, which does not receive in-kind food aid, but instead is receiving nutritional cash transfers, meaning that women get cash and then they're um, trained on how to purchase food, the foods they need 
to feed themselves and their children under two. So this is used in situations where food is in markets, but people are extremely poor and unable to purchase it. So it's another way to get at the issue of uh, nutritious foods. And um, this is you, the uh, cash transfers are used to support pregnant mothers and those with children under two to purchase nutritious foods. And these um, are provided electronically to the extent possible. Um, so women may not own their own handsets, but other women in the community may be able to um, provide them cash and cash in on the cash transfers. Um, so in the case of Teach Gulani, um, cash transfers are being provided to pregnant women um, and lactating women and women under two, with children under two, who fall within the category, uh, the most vulnerable household categories of hanging in and stepping up. And they cannot uh, manage to produce or access um, all food groups. So um, these are being scaled up at the moment in Malawi and uh, social and behavioral change messages are provided to support mothers in knowing what to buy, what to purchase for their children. Um, another, another modality is vouchers. So food vouchers in particular are used in situations where food is in the markets, but people are extremely poor and unable to purchase it. So it is an income support that enables uh, people to purchase food. It's used to support pregnant mothers and those with children under two also to purchase nutritious foods. So um, in the case of nutrition vouchers, it's very similar to nutrition cash transfers, except that the vouchers tend to be tied to certain vendors and certain foods. Um, so specialized vendors are trained to sell into the safety nets program and are remunerated by the program. Um, they're also provided electronically to the extent possible. And in many cases, it is the vendor who uh, receives a cash transfer um, directly after um, providing food to people with vouchers. And in this case, this is a picture of a woman who benefited from the Corey Lavi program. Now, she was not in a situation of providing food for nutrition, but she was able to purchase food uh, in uh, that was perishable and non-perishable. As you can see, she has a lot of vegetables in her basket, very rich in nutrients. And these purchases act also as an incentive to farmers and market actors to produce, deliver, and sell them, sell these foods for vouchers. So this woman who benefited from the Corey La Vie program in Haiti uh, purchased local foods from the market um, from vendors who uh, was the vendors who were specially trained to receive vouchers and receive the uh, remuneration for them. This is an example um, of local, regional, and international procurement. So this is a procurement outside of uh, the US. It may be in the country in which the food aid is used. It may be purchased in another nearby country or regionally purchased, or it may be procured in another country at some distance from where it is being used. And that is called international procurement. Um, so it's used in the same situations that in-kind food aid is used. That is where it's not possible to obtain food or nutritious food. So the food may not be coming from the US, 
but it may be coming from other nearby countries or even the country itself in a, it may be in a different part where food is plentiful and uh, is currently available for purchase. It's used in countries where local, regional, and international procurement is faster or, and or it may be less expensive um, than shipment of the food from the US. So in many countries, for instance, those in East Africa, those in Asia, it can take anywhere from four to six months to ship the food. It also takes a long time to procure the food within the US. So this moves food more quickly, um, usually cutting down the shipping time uh, by several months and therefore makes it easier um, and more available for use. Um, it, it's used in cases where bulk purchase is more efficient than cash or vouchers, such as in school feeding. So in this particular case, the government purchases food. So in this case of Timor-Leste, which I'm showing here, um, the government purchases food from the country, from farmers in Timor-Leste and distributes it as part of the Hatutan program. So these children have the opportunity to purchase, um, to, sorry, to receive, to consume locally purchased food in their school meals. Um, and this can also be used to enable production and consumption of local foods, but also it can act as an incentive to farmers to produce the foods that are going to be purchased for school feeding. Uh, now, in terms of requirements, um, in general, an analysis of local market conditions is always requirement, is always required in order to select a food aid modality. So if you want to um, use in-kind food uh, or purchase food locally, or you want to uh, make available cash and vouchers, all of those potentials are possible. Um, but it's important to do, to analyze the local market conditions first. CARE prefers that a gendered market analysis is conducted because it is critical for us to understand and determine the potential impacts on women, small scale producers and vendors, as well as recipients. What's going to work for them? What will make the biggest difference? It is also important that women are targeted with, um, with safety nets. So that is also part of this analysis that takes place. Now, if US in-kind food aid is used, a Bellman analysis is required. It's kind of a market analysis to determine whether imported US food aid will create disincentives to local production or marketing. So basically saying, will this US food substitute or uh, keep mar farmers out of the markets or local market actors uh, prevent local market actors from selling food. Um, in addition, there's a port assessment that is required as part of this to ensure that U.S. food aid shipments uh, will create congestion at the ports or um, cause other kinds of problems in terms of availability of equipment, et cetera. So the USA, USAID Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance, or BHA, um, recommends use of the decision, this de decision-making tool when determining the best modality for a program and justifying the selection. So when uh, a BHA funded program is being implemented, it's important to use this 
decision-making tool um, as a basis for decision-making. So first, appropriateness. Um, is this modality appropriate for the sector given the market conditions? So here is where it is necessary to do a market analysis to assess food availability throughout the year, as well as um, the price and availability of nutritious foods that will supply women uh, and children and children, especially children under two with sufficient nutritional, um, with sufficient nutritional uh, supplementation given their diet. And quite often diets are very, uh, in, in developing countries tend to uh, revolve around staples, um, but being able to provide diverse foods is important um, and to consume diverse foods is important for, for women of childbearing age, for children under two, um, as well as micro other micronutrients being supplied. Does the proposed modality and delivery mechanism have a reasonable chance of success considering the context, infrastructure, and programming risks? Now, this is really important in terms of being able to ensure that we can accountably and effectively deliver food aid to mothers and children as appropriate. So it's important for us to understand the feasibility of these mechanisms and understand um, whether the modality, what's the best modality given how feasible uh, those different uh, potential uh, delivery mechanisms are. And then the third question is, is the modality best suited to meet programming and sector objectives? So for instance, um, if we are um, engaged in a program that is focused on building sustainability, we might want to reconsider whether in-kind food aid is a good idea. Um, is it serving a purpose? What purpose is it serving? Is it interfering with other types of objectives um, in terms of production, uh, home production of nutritious foods, or uh, ensuring that um, sufficient cash is available in the household to purchase the foods that mothers and children's need, children need and infants as well? Um, do we have that? Uh, so those are some of the things that need to be taken into consideration in terms of objective. And finally, the cost. Is the modality cost efficient and or cost effective relative to others? So as, as noted above, you know, part of the safety debt modality for Niger is in-kind food. Why? Because there is sufficient nutritious food available in Niger. Um, it's in the markets. Um, in fact, there's a blended fortified food that's available um, that is comparable to CSB, a corn soy blend, which is a very nutritious commodity. Corn soy blend plus is a very nutritious commodity available through in-kind food uh, from the US. But uh, because those local commodities are not affordable uh, to women and it was not possible to purchase enough of those commodities to meet the needs of women in of poor women in those communities, in-kind food was used instead. Now, in terms of safety nets and food and water systems, CARE has a food assistance policy that uh, will be approved shortly um, as of this moment. 
the, and some of the recommendations are as follows. Safety nets must be fit for purpose. They, are, they must be tailored to people's needs and they must be appropriate to the local economy. Gender considerations should be taken into account when selecting or utilizing safety nets. As mentioned above, there are problems uh, that um, can come about in terms of women uh, having access to safety nets as well as benefiting from them. Safety nets should not build dependency by creating disincentives for small farmers and vendors, many of whom are women. As I mentioned before, we do not wanna see that happen. Um, they should instead create incentives and benefits to women and youth who are farmers, market actors, and employees. They should provide assistance in a way that does no harm to vulnerable groups. Okay, so if you're trying to improve the uh, resilience of groups who are relying on a safety net, the, the support provided to those should not, uh, should not mean that they have to rely again and again on a safety net, but that resilience is built into the types of interventions that they uh, are implementing. Safety net programs should be accompanied by sufficient cash resources to foster resilience and behavior change and to improve the sustainability of livelihoods, nutrition, wash, disaster risk reduction, natural resource management, and local safety nets to the extent possible. And also within the CARE food assistance policy, robust M&E and tracking mechanisms must be used to track and report on safety net distributions and recipients, particularly um, the, any kind of um, mechanism for reporting by beneficiaries about uh, any kind of uh, problem with targeting or misuse as well, um, safety net distributions and recipients uh, must uh, be followed up through post-distribution monitoring to ensure that they received what they were due. So fraud, abuse, gender-based violence, sexual exploitation and abuse are all major risks for every single food aid modality, cash, vouchers, in-kind food, local, regional procurement, et cetera. So training, monitoring, and constant vigilance, including formal feedback mechanisms, must be made available to staff and participants. Equity and fairness are critical to targeting safety nets and ensuring that the most appropriate populations receive safety net support. So there are two types of programs that utilize safety nets um, that are supported by USAID. Um, both of them are actually managed by the Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance. So humanitarian activities utilize in-kind food aid, cash vouchers, and local, regional, and international procurement. Um, as they are aiming to, um, they're aiming to uh, save lives in many cases, as well as ensure that people maintain uh, food security. So um, the purpose is to provide immediate life-saving support in situations of severe food insecurity and acute malnutrition, but they may also provide uh, short-term safety nets as people 
move back into their livelihoods. Um, but as they may need additional support with that, um, USAID BHA Resilience Food Security Activities, or um, RFSAs, utilize in kind, also utilize in-kind food aid, cash vouchers, and local regional and international procurement, depending on the appropriateness of those mechanisms. The purpose is to provide social protection safety net support for extremely poor and chronically vulnerable populations to reduce chronic malnutrition and poverty. And these programs continue to focus over time on this, but also help with graduation from safety nets as time moves on. They may also provide inputs via cash or vouchers. Um, the USDA McGovern Dole Food for Education Child and Child Nutrition uh, programs mainly use in-kind food aid, but up to 10% of the total value of the programs um, may be used for local, regional, international procurement. Um, and basically, um, you know, the food is used to provide incentives for children, especially girls, to enroll in and attend school and to promote sustainable purchase and use and distribution of local, regional, nutritious foods to provide healthy meals to children attending schools. And that is the end of my brief presentation. There is much, much more to say about safety net modalities. If you would like additional information, here's my contacts. Here are my contacts. Thank you.